My name is Maria Jessup, and I'll be your platform assistant this morning. I'm very pleased to welcome back to our service, Reverend Teresa Chrissy. She's a licensed Unity teacher from Unity of Norwalk in Connecticut, and an interface minister from One Spirit Learning Alliance. I'm also happy to welcome back our wonderful, fabulous David Kane on the keyboard. For a centering prayer, please take a moment to get in a comfortable and seated position and close your eyes. I'd like you to picture yourself sitting in a place where you can feel the gentle warmth of the early morning sun's rays shining on your face. Observe your breath without doing anything, letting it flow in and out naturally. Now turn your attention to the warm light of love shining on your face and let it bring a hint of a smile to your face. Now repeat each phrase after me. We pray for the health wholeness and happiness of everyone who has joined the service today. We pray for the health, wholeness, and happiness of all our family members, friends, and colleagues, past, present, and future. We pray for the health, wholeness, and happiness of all those we think about and communicate with and encounter by chance today. We pray for the health, wholeness, and happiness of everyone in our home. We pray for the health, wholeness, happiness of everyone in our country, in this world, and beyond this world. May a great wave 
of love, joy, peace, and forgiveness wash over us in glad recognition that we are one. Thank you so much for having me once again. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here. So today my talk is called, titled, Being in the Now Forever or Being in the Forever Now. And let's just begin with being, right? We're human beings. Eckhart Tolle says, human is the form that we are. Human is doing whatever form does. I don't know if you ever heard the expression, I'm not a human doing, I'm a human being. Well, we also get the opportunity to do on this planet, but being is the essence of who we are. So we are both. We are the being, the consciousness, and we are the form. 
and the form will do the things it acts upon in the world. And there are very few of us that are completely balanced between the human ego and the being essence. Our society leans much more toward the doing and thinking. It actually begins with us as children. Let's go, let's do, let's sign up for sports, let's do all of these things. And all or most of our attention at that point is outward focused. Even many great thinkers who are very successful, are very successful doers, are outward focused. Eventually, they encounter frustration and emptiness, and not the Buddhist emptiness, another kind of emptiness. Our civilization is longing to return to the roots of the being dimension. Our goal is to find the balance of the human part of doing and the being part of human. This reminds me of a few analogies. One is like when you're in the grocery store and you see a fresh, beautiful piece of fruit that's really shiny and beautiful and that you take it home and you cut it and it's dry on the inside or tasteless. So we can on the outward look so great, but on the inward not have done our work. Another one is social media. Everyone wants to feel a sense of belonging and connection. So they use social media to know everyone's story and to put our story out there. But yet it's kind of like fast food, you know? And when we go for fast food, we get food and we're no longer hungry, but deep down we're still starving. So deep down, we still have a longing to belong. So, I don't know if you can remember feeling that sense of true connection. For me, it feels like a hole has been filled and I'm living on purpose. It happens when I'm vulnerable and I share from my heart, when I'm authentic and telling my truth, telling what's going on for me. And of course, when I meditate, I feel that sensation of being. Aside from these, I too can be more of a doer than a beer. I realized as I meditated more and more, as I got into the daily practice, I got so much more comfortable with being. I got so much more comfortable with both being vulnerable and being authentic. I'm gaining more and more a sense of who I am. Basically, I'm talking about how to be mindful learning how to be in the here and now and do that every minute forever sometimes i can notice one thing at a time a bee a flower the rain a sunset other times i notice everything at once the trees the plants the sky the grass the birds but whether i focus on one thing or the larger landscape the practice is to sense myself in the presence while I look. Eckhart Tolle says, this is how we become aware of the sacredness of nature. Nobody can really explain what sacredness means, but when we sense it, we know it. And I'm coming to believe that everything can be sacred. It is about the attention and intention we put into whatever we're focusing on. It is an expression of the one life, of the one consciousness. If you love what you see, there is no longer a sense of separateness. There is a joy in your heart. The joy that we were talking about from the daily word that I also read earlier this morning that put such a smile on my face, that no matter what's going on, the joy is still there inside of me. This is an aspect of the balance of being and doing. Being aware of being while you do. The danger is when you are, say it in a work situation and something a little more complex than being in nature, right? The danger is losing yourself in the activity or actually losing your thoughts of the activity to something else. So you're no longer present. When we are in something and involved and 
engrossed in it, that is being present to what it is. That's being in the moment. That's being mindful. But when we're doing it and then we're thinking of something else and all of a sudden we get scared or we realize, oh, we don't have much time left and the stress starts to build, we're no longer being in this moment of what we are doing. We're no longer rooted in the being. We are out there somewhere else. A sure sign of this is that you get a feeling of discomfort, a feeling of stress. Something happens when you look at the time or remember random thoughts that come in and stress you out. You've just stopped being. If you remember quickly, great, because you can get yourself back into the forever now, bringing your thoughts back to this present moment. If you don't remember quickly, or I don't remember quickly, the stress comes and because I am thinking or sensing something from the past or something out there is terrible, I lose my sense of connectedness. Something that did not feel good or that did not end the way I wished it could, all of a sudden just took me out of this place of being in the moment. So the more mindful we are in our doing, the more present we are in our lives. The more we are living in the forever now. Now, like many other people, sometimes just being, meaning the practice of meditation is what really helped me to be more, right? And so many people like me in the beginning were really uncomfortable with that being, really uncomfortable with the silence because it wasn't really silence. There was lots of thoughts going on in my mind, but learning to let that go. And before I began meditating, like I said, it was very scary for me. I tried to do meditation. You can't do meditation. It's more like a sense of space for allowing meditation. Then someone suggested to me, begin with five minutes of meditation a day. And that's what worked for me. I couldn't use the excuse, I don't have five minutes. I mean, I knew enough that I could even wake up five minutes earlier. Yeah. Now, I cannot go a day without meditating. It's worse than a day without food. I began meditating five minutes a day, then 10 minutes, then 20, and now 30 minutes a day. This meditation practice really helps me to live in the moment. And realizing that all my past moments got me here today. You know, uh, I got married late in life. I've been married 12 years. And so I was in my 50s when I got married. And there was a, a point in time that I was every day thinking, oh, I have this great marriage. I love this man. And I wish I was younger. I wish we had longer. To, we're not going to have that much time together. And somebody pointed out to me, you're ruining the now. You're ruining the time you do have by thinking like that. It was like an aha moment. Like, oh yeah, let me be in this moment and be grateful that I have found love in this life. All the people and situations and highs and lows of my past got me to being right here. And that allows me to bring my higher consciousness into more situations. I still catch myself thinking unkind thoughts about myself, but I stop and replace them with true thoughts. Like, for example, last week, I'm just I'm doing, um, doing some more, more and more weddings and I'm going out there and trying to promote myself and doing weddings. And I, I spoke to two couples last week. And by, I don't know, Friday, neither one of them had gotten back to me and I'm like panicking. Oh, that's because I'm terrible at it. That's because nobody likes me. I mean, it was awful what I was doing to myself. And then finally, one of them got back to me and said, I've been working all week. I'm really sorry. Yes, we want to hire you. And I was like, oh, yay. And then the other one actually responded to a text and it turned out that her fiance got really sick. And I was like, wow, all of that thinking I did about myself and negative thoughts that I had were, were just things to pull me away from the truth of who I am. So, and, and the reality that nobody, there's nothing that can take any couple away from me. 
there are couples out there that I am the right person who's going to marry them. So it's shifting my thoughts into what is true and what's helped me to stay in that higher vibration. I don't want to force anybody to be my client. I've done that before. And it, believe me, it's not always fun. It becomes a, a tug of war throughout the whole time. So this mindfulness is a spiritual practice aimed to help us remember that the true self is the soul or the being, not the ego, not the human doing. We empty or release or strip off the self we are wearing, the egoic self that we may have been over identifying with by for so many things and reveal the soul of love that remains underneath it all. We remember the truth that the true self we are is the eternal soul. We remember the souls that under these layers we wear all throughout the day and at different points in our lives are the truth of who we are. You know, nakedness is a rite of patches. When we, passage, when we're born, we are all naked. It's compulsory for birth, right? And it is the only way we can begin again as someone new or as more of the truth of who we are, more authentic, more real, is to get naked willingly or by waiting for the whispers of the need to change become a war. And when I say get naked, I mean become authentic. Who are you? What is the expression of God that you came here to be? So whether the nakedness feels forced by external circumstances are initiated by conscious intention. The nakedness or authenticity means we're ready to begin again. Now Lent is just 10 days away. So I wanna loop this into Lent. Lent became a word from lectin, which means to lengthen, which refers to the lengthening of the days during the spring. Spring is always thought of as a time of renewal, rebirth rejuvenation. The heart of what Lent could mean is self-renewal, self-reflection. Participating in Lent is not only a way to reconnect to our wisdom, our soul, but an opportunity to recenter in God's love and open us up to new types of awareness. And Romans 12 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. It is a time to be transformed, to become more alive, awake, and attuned to that highest consciousness within all of us. In Keep a True Lent, Charles Fillmore says, to observe Lent, Lent according to the spirit rather than letter, we must fast from criticism and condemnation and feast on brotherly love, fast from false beliefs in sickness and weakness and feast on the truth of God's omnipresent, perfect life. Fast from false beliefs in lack and limitation and feast on the truth of God's bountiful goodwill. Feast, now this is, this is no longer his quote, his quote just ended, but I say feast from doing too much because we are believed we are not enough or for whatever reason and feast on our greatness and our gifts. Spiritual principles and practices for Lent allow us to behave in ways that are more consistent with acting from our highest mind. Rather than spending 40 days looking at flaws and foibles and feeling miserable about them, instead look at new principles by which to live and new practices to help us do that. Remember, I want to say when we see our foils and flaws and, and issues, we need to remember we've just fallen asleep. When we awake to the truth of who we are, the beloved child of God, we awaken to new levels of being. We can get up and rise from our spiritual slumber and reattune to the oneness that we are. It is the soul searching Lent that brings that opportunity for full expression of Easter Christ within, which is our hope of glory. Spiritual principle of unity found in John 1.11 says, Jesus said, to love one another as God has loved you. 
so that we can be in unity. John 17th chapter, Jesus prayed that we may all be one like he and God are one. These two scriptures are asking us to practice compassion, putting ourselves in someone else's shoes and practicing empathy. Be aware of someone else's feelings. Use these instead of comparison and judgment. Instead of comparing, I have compassion. Instead of judging, I have empathy. This is all beings in humility and the knowledge that we are all the same, that there is no other. Lent is about self-reflection, not always easy or comfortable. Many people give up food or habits or ways of thinking. Some alternative practices open us up to compassion and consciousness give up old ideas about God that no longer serve us, incorporate prayer or meditation into our daily practice, cultivate a mindful practice in order to be in the forever now, serve, ask what is mine to do. So I wanna finish up with the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And I, I'm right now teaching a unity prayer class and we put it into um, terms of affirmative prayer. So some of the words are a little different and it goes, Lord, I am an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, I so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where jewel, where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine, I do not seek, I do not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to, under, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying to the human self that we are born into eternal Christ. So I leave you with that to be awake and to be conscious and to show up and to be mindful. I want to say thank you. I'm your sister companion in prayer, possibility, and power. I see you. I appreciate you. I love you. Until we meet again, remember you are blessed and you are a blessing. Let us take a few moments to breathe and become still. Open up your heart and let go. Arriving in your body in this moment. Feel the alignment of your heart with all of the people in your life, all of the people that you love, and everything around you. Surrender. Commit to self-love. Commit to compassion with patience and acceptance. Be kind to yourself and others. Observe your thoughts and feelings. Awaken to new levels of trust. Understanding this is a cleansing and a purification of mind. Taking another deep breath, making new and beautiful choices that serve and support you. It starts with you. Take another breath. Know your heart is open. Healing is happening. You are blessed. Feel the gratitude. Breathe this prayer into your heart. Soften and let go. As we go into the silence for a moment, feel the knowing that you are never alone. You are never separate.
Take another breath. Come back to the room. And remember that being is the most important doing that you can do. to our closing prayer. Not one light in heaven but goes with you. Not one ray that shines forever in the mind of God but shines on you. Heaven is joined with you in your advance to heaven. When such great lights have joined with you to give the little spark of your desire the power of God himself, can you remain in darkness? You and your brother are coming home together after a long and meaningless journey that you undertook apart and led nowhere. You have found your brother and you will light each other's way. And from this light will the great rays extend back into darkness and forward unto God to shine away the past and so make room for his eternal presence in which everything is radiant in the light. We are so blessed here at Unity Center DC for extraordinary speakers, talented musicians who share with us each week their God gift, their message, their inspiration. And for us as recipients, I'd like you to take this moment and be grateful. 
If you want to express your gratitude by giving a gift to Unity Center DC, it's possible we'll put up on the screen the options, but you can give online, you can mail a cash or a check to the address you'll see on the screen so that we can continue this ministry, which has blessed us all. Thank you.